When it comes to Dumble amplifiers, there is no one on the planet who is rumored to own as many as John Mayer. And when you take a look at his history with these amplifiers as a whole, it's very easy to agree with this statement. I mean, Keith Urban once said that John Mayer owns at least 14 Dumbles. 14. And that was years ago, so imagine all the ones he's gotten into his possession since then. And that really is the whole point of today's video. I'm going to be doing a just massive deep dive into John Mayer's Dumble history. We're going to take a look at all the different models and specific amplifiers in each model group that John is at least rumored to have owned over the years, ones that he's used all the way back since 2004 to present day over really what is a just astonishing 20 year career that John Mayer has had. So sit back, relax and enjoy today's video all on John Mayer's Dumble history. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be long, but this is a video that has been highly requested by you guys. So we're just going to do a nice deep dive with all these amplifiers and have some fun today. Now I could not have done today's video without the help of Jesse who's at Jesse's Guitar Lounge on Instagram. This gem of a human being has owned four, yes, four Dumbles that John has owned at one point or another, whether he owned them and then John owned them later on in life or Jesse got the amp from John. It's just really an incredible story of these certain four amplifiers that Jesse has had just a lot of first-hand experience with and the details he's provided for today's video and assistance with today's video. Just, I couldn't have done it without you, Jesse. So massive shout out to him. Go check his profile out. You guys won't be disappointed. His collection is insane and he's just an incredible guy. So Jesse, thank you so much for your help in today's video. We'll be taking some different quotes and insight from Jesse throughout today's video. And please keep in mind, well, this is a deep dive into all the different Dumbles John has owned and that we've seen him use over the years. I'm not going to be doing a deep dive into every specific individual amplifier. I'm gonna be making some separate videos later on as a follow-up to this one, where I really go in depth into detail on each different Dumble amplifier, not every single one, but like the Steel String Singers, some of the Dumble Ands, as well as the Overdrive Reverb. I'll tackle all those in their own unique video where I can just spend some time and really discuss each amplifier separately. So this is just my way of making this video not like an hour and a half long, essentially. So keep that in mind for today's video. And I thought the best way of going about making this video is to take every Dumble category of amplifier, you know, overdrive specials, Dumble and still string singers, and tackle the kind of order that way in each category, rather than trying to go within a chronological timeline sort of order. It's just gonna be a lot easier to kind of discuss things this way rather than trying to order everything in the exact timeline that John started using them or that we think he acquired them. It's gonna be a lot easier for me too, if I'm being honest in making this video. So that's how we're gonna go through today's video. So the very first category we're gonna take a look at is the Dumble Overdrive Specials. And specifically to start off, we're gonna take a look at the 1990s Dumble Overdrive Specials. And this is because they're kind of a unique category on their own in terms of John's history. It's the most, most used category of Dumble ODS that John has ever used is these 90s ODSs. And forewarning, this is the area of the video with the most gray area in it, I guess, where we're not 100% sure on an exact number. We have a few confirmed serial numbers of different Dumble ODSs that he's used, but because they all look identical, it's rather difficult to tell which amp we are actually seeing at different points in John's career. So I'm gonna do my best to kind of give you guys the clearest picture of all the different Dumble ODSs from the 90s that John has used and the 100 watt head format, keep that in mind as well. So let's get into this part of the video. And the best way to start off this portion is going to be to talk about the ones that we have confirmed serial numbers first for the 100 watt 90s Dumble ODSs. And the first one is Dumble Overdrive Special serial number 222. This amplifier is actually currently owned by Jesse, who I mentioned at the beginning of this video, again, at Jesse's Guitar Lounge. And this is one of the Dumbles that John Mayer used in the studio to record Continuum. Yeah, let that sink in for a minute that he owns uh, one of the Continuum Dumbles pretty insane if I say so myself. So Dumble Overdrive Special serial number 222 was actually acquired by Jesse in about uh, 2015, I believe it was, he said. And it was in a part cash and part amp trade where John Mayer bought the Dumble Land Special serial number 008 off of Jesse and also gave some cash in exchange for Jesse keeping one Dumble in his collection in which John offered this Dumble amplifier and the rest is kind of history in terms of this Dumble ODS. Now, it's number one, really crazy to think that someone so great as Jesse actually owns one of the Continuum Dumbles. That's just insane. And gives a really great insight as to, you know, one of the amplifiers that you actually 
know John used on the record. And we also have confirmation in part thanks to Jesse as well that John also owns another Dumble ODS in a sequential serial number from this amplifier, which means that John either owns Dumble ODS serial number 221 or 223. That's the other confirmed serial number Dumble that we have. We just don't know exactly which one it is, but it's one of the sequential ones that John also owns and was also used on Continuum. Now, there is also a rumor of a third Dumble Overdrive Special being used on Continuum. So this would technically put us at three separate Dumble ODSs just used on Continuum alone. And remember, the ODSs were mainly used in the front half of the recording of Continuum. There is a different Dumble that John relied on later on for the Continuum Studio Sessions, which we'll touch on a little later in this video. So we have around three Dumbles that John might have used, for sure confirmed at least two. Now, some more history behind John's ODSs in the 90s 100-watt head format. John acquired his very first Overdrive Special, his very first Dumble, in fact, around 2003 during the Heavier Things recording sessions, around that time when he was working on the album. That's when he acquired his very first Dumble, and in 2004, you see him perform with it a handful of times. It really did not get a lot of stage use at all. John really stuck with his two two rocks for that, and the Dumble ODS was mainly used for studio recording purposes. And then, of course, we know the John Mayer Trio. That's kind of where the Dumble ODS really became part of John's live rig. Now into Continuum as well, of course, where the light is, especially you famously have another Dumble Overdrive special that the pilot light was actually not working for that night um, for where the light is. Now there's, of course, some theories where John actually wasn't using the Dumble Overdrive special for that performance, and it was actually just off. But I think that's a lot of effort to set up his main amp rig, which we know he was using up until the point of where the light is during the tour. And for him just to have it on there and then not have it on, have it mic'd and everything, I think that's just a lot of work. So my theory and a lot of my friends' theory is just that the pilot light went out at some point before the show and they just didn't bother to fix it until later on during the tour. So I personally think that John did use a Dumble ODS on where the light is as part of his three amp setup. Now, all these different Dumble Overdrive specials that you see, his very first one, the one used during the John Mayer Trio, and then the one used during the Continuum Tour, it's impossible to know which Dumble Overdrive special that is. Are they all separate? I kind of doubt it, to be honest. I'm willing to bet that probably one of the other ones he kept that was used on Continuum, for sure, either 221 or 223, is probably at least one of these amplifiers that we've seen. I'm willing to kind of assume that 221 or 223 is the Trio Overdrive Special or the Continuum Tour Overdrive Special. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. Jesse is rather unsure as far as I'm aware of, you know, the extent of the touring um, legacy of his amplifier, serial number 222. So it might have just been used for the studio and he might have, John might have had, you know, another one that was used for mainly touring purposes. We don't really know at this point. But for these 1990s 100 watt overdrive special heads, we for sure know that John had two of them. And again, possibly that third separate one that was also used on Continuum for the recording. So take for that what you will. And like I said, this is the part of the video with the most kind of gray area in it. Because these heads all look just identical, it's absolutely impossible to tell them apart and which one is which. So like I said, there's a few different, you know, things that could be going on where one of them was mainly used for live, one was mainly used for studio, who knows, but we have a couple confirmed serial numbers and again, a heavily rumored possible third. And knowing John, I would not be surprised if there is a third ODS and maybe that rumored third ODS is his very first one because we know Dumbles, they're not all identical, even though these all are 90s overdrive specials, 100 watts, they're all built for the original owner and tweaked a little bit by Dumble himself when he builds them. So maybe John was looking for one with a little bit more bottom end from his very first one and then found the one he used for the John Mayer Trail. Just for example's sake, right? So keep that in mind when we're talking about these ODSs. It's rather hard to kind of categorize them. And that's why I wanted to tackle the serial numbers first and then kind of when we've seen John Mayer using these amplifiers. Perhaps the most interesting out of all of these different Dumble ODSs is an 80s Dumble Overdrive Special that John owned. I don't believe we ever saw him use it live. I've never seen any footage, at least, of John using this specific amplifier live. But it's the one that he sold to Keith Urban as Keith Urban's very first Dumble. And during his rig rundown in 2014, you actually see this amplifier. So I'll play that to you guys now from Premier Guitar. 
Michael, tell us a little bit about these uh, the pair of dumbbells you have sitting here first. This dumbbell head he actually got first. He bought this off another uh, another up here of his, and um, it it's amazing sounding amp, and it just. Uh, it's not, you know, how dumbbells are so specific. Each one, you know, they were made for whoever the original consumer was, you know, was voiced for them. This one was voiced for something with a little bit more bottom end, uh, which is not really his. Don't get me wrong, it's a great amp. And apologies if this is stating the kind of obvious, but I want to cover this for those who might not know. Um, you can tell that this is an 80s overdrive special because of the font that Alexander Dumble actually used for the amplifier and just the style of it. That's how you kind of can tell them apart. All those 90s have that same font within the Dumble in that kind of gold writing. And then this one you can clearly see is just very different style to those other amplifiers. So that's how we know it's an 80s amplifier, not a 90s. The next ODS we're going to talk about might be John Mayer's second double ever, just by virtue of how far back in his career we can actually take a look at him using it live. It's the second dumble we ever see him use live, that's for sure. And it's a silver panel dumble ODS combo that's 50 watts. And the very first show we see him use it is in 2004. Now in 2004 there was that horrible tsunami that affected, you know, tens of millions of people that happened in the Indian Ocean and there were a series of benefit performances to raise money for this terrible natural disaster. And John Mayer used this Dumble Overdrive special combo for that one performance of Bold as Love for Tsunami Relief and you guys will hear a little bit of it now. But the video quality is just terrible. I mean, you know, for 2004 I'm surprised we even have some just footage of this that was aired but it's terrible but that's the amplifier he used. Now, John did use this amplifier for a handful of other performances, and the coolest one is in 2016 when he performed at the Hotel Cafe with David Ryan Harris, and you actually see him use this amplifier for this performance. Now, there's one small thing with the show and this amplifier that I'm not 100% sure of, and you guys are going to be seeing it on your screen as I'm talking here. The knobs on the amplifier, to me, look a little different than what they should. John actually posted a really well, half decent photo of this amplifier on his Instagram way back in the day. And from what I'm seeing here in this video, the knobs don't appear to be the same. It's not the best look in this video we get of this amplifier, mind you, but to me, they look a little bit different. So there's a small possibility that this could be a separate ODS combo that's silver panel, probably 50 watts that we're looking at. I'm Pretty confident it's the same amplifier and I'm just probably seeing things, but let me know in the comments down below what you think, but I saw that and I just can't unsee that the knobs to me look a little bit different than what they should for this amplifier, but nevertheless, really cool performance with, let's just assume it's the same amplifier. All right, we're on to our very last Dumble Overdrive special here, and this amplifier is a 50 watt silver panel head. Now this amplifier was actually owned by Carlos Santana, which is really cool. And this amplifier was used primarily live, at least, with Dead & Company in 2019. And it's just a really rare look at John using a less than 100 watt dumble. Majority of the time, he's using a 100 watt or 150 watt amplifier. But with this one for Dead & Company in 2019, he stuck with this 50 watt little guy, this little overdrive special. And this will round off the dumble overdrive special portion of this video. And it's probably very long already. I apologize, but got to, you know, Go over all of them here. We're not leaving any app, you know, untouched in this video, that's for sure. Whoops, just kidding here, guys. We have one more Dumble Overdrive special we have to actually go over. That's, again, just part of the different category from those 90s ones. And this just goes to show how difficult it is to actually pinpoint how many Dumbles John owns because I almost forgot about this one. And it's because we've never seen him use it live and we've only ever seen it once in one Instagram photo John posted back in 2019. And I actually remember this one thinking of what thumbnail I was gonna use for this video. And this is a Dumble Overdrive special from the 70s, a very early one. It's got this really unique wooden, um, actually like head shell. It definitely looks like wood to me. It's got kind of like a shine to it. And then it's got just a nice diamond grill cloth with tan. And obviously with the writing, you can tell this is a very early 70s ODS that John has. And he took this photo kind of cheekily during the Dead & Company summer run in 2019. And you actually, if you look at the, um, the photo there, 
you actually see what I believe is that 50 watt overdrive special head. Um, I think that's what we see there. It could just be a totally different dumbbell, but I, that's what I believe that one is there. But this just goes to show you that if John hadn't taken this rather cheeky photo, we'd have no idea that he owns this specific dumbbell from the 70s. And again, what's a really unique kind of combination in terms of the like the head shell style and the grill cloth. It's a really unique looking dumbbell and I think it looks great, but the wood would be a bit, you know, I'd be really scared of damaging just the wood finish and shipping it on there if I was John using it on tour. Maybe that's why it's on the jet with them and of course the dumbbell that's behind him too. But if John has this dumbbell that he's been taking on tour with him, probably either as a backup or one that he was thinking of maybe using and then just decided, ah, now I'm gonna stick with the amp setup that I'm currently liking, what other dumbbells does he have that we just have no idea about? What other dumbbells that are used just strictly for studio use that we never see? What other ones has he bought that he thought he'd maybe use and then decides, nah, I like the ones that I'm in love with the most and I'm just gonna put this one in the vault and you know, I, I don't need to sell it because I'm John Mayer. If I don't feel like selling it, I don't need to sell it and maybe I'll use it one day or it's just nice and part of my own personal curation and collection. So. Again, just keep that in mind throughout this whole video. We have a lot of dumbbells that we know he's used because we've seen them out on tour. But this is one example of, whoa, this is something different we've never seen him use live. And if he hadn't kind of showcased this amplifier, well, then we'd have no idea that it was in his possession. So keep that in mind. Again, we have one more dumbbell ODS that John was using. So moving on from the ODSs, we're gonna stick with the Dumble Overdrive category here one last time, and we're gonna talk about what is just my favorite Dumble amplifier that John has ever used and owned, and it's Dumble Overdrive Reverb serial number 59. Now this amplifier is most famously seen from the Who Did You Think I Was music video, and this amplifier pretty much always sat on a Dumble 412 cabinet, which is just a different, you know, combination than what we're used to seeing from John in terms of cabinets, you know, pretty much always sticking with 212s. But this one was, I think, pretty much always paired during the trio era with that 412 cabinet. Wasn't used super religiously or anything like that, but it was mainly, you know, another dumbbell that he would feature for different performances and kind of experiment with during this era. Now, Dumble Overdrive Reverb number 59 is my favorite Dumble amp that John has ever used, and this is going to be one of those deep dive videos I make separately from this one. But essentially because all of my favorite John Mayer trail performances, more or less, especially the tones for Who Did You Think I Was, have this amplifier in the rig in common. And it's one of, I think, the main reasons why I gravitate towards the sounds of those performances over others because of this amplifier and I really want to get a clone of this amplifier at some point or another um, because I just, I'm just very curious about this amplifier, I'll say that. Anyways, we'll save the deep dive for this amplifier for the future video that I'm going to make on this specific amplifier alone because I don't want to ramble on about this amp for 10-15 minutes in a very long video as it is. So this amplifier was very first seen used live during the very third John Mayer Trio show ever and these pictures you are seeing are from Joshua Bryant who sent them to me to use for just a handful of videos. So Joshua, massive shout out to you for sending these in and just really great look at this amplifier being used um, the very first time we see John using it. And this amp was actually originally owned by Jackson Brown and there's a, another Jackson Brown connection a little bit later on we'll discuss in this video. In 2009, the late and great Jeff Beck, may he rest in peace, brought John Mayer up on stage to perform a cover of Maniac Depression by Jimi Hendrix. And the amp that John used is the Dumble Overdrive Reverb. And it's kind of cool to see him using it with Alessandro cabs rather than the Dumble 412 cab that we always saw him use it with. And this is the very last time we actually ever see John Mayer using this amplifier live. But take a look at this just wild performance of John and Jeff. Now John actually doesn't own this Dumble anymore. It changed hands a few times and actually wound up in Jesse's possession for a while and he told me that it's the best sounding amplifier he ever heard and that he was very sad that he sold it but hey, it ended up going to Keith Urban from him so just really cool that Keith Urban now owns this Dumble as well. There is a bit of drama around 
the transitioning of this dumbbell out of John's hands and essentially he got ripped off. I'm gonna save kind of some of these details for again that deep dive that I'm gonna do on this specific amplifier and include some shots of it in Keith Urban's possession and details of it there as well. So again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel to be notified when that video is coming out because it's gonna be a really good one. I'm pretty passionate about that specific amplifier at least. But let's move on now to John's most famous dumbbells the Steel String Singers, and we're gonna start off with Steel String Singer 002. Ah uh, yes, Dumble Steel String Singer 002. What a brilliantly special amplifier this one is. This is another Dumble that was originally owned by Jackson Brown, and John got this amplifier during kind of the back half of Continuum's recording. And there's a really famous quote where John talks about this amplifier, and when him and Renee first plugged it in to the 64 Strat, it gave them goosebumps with how just great it sounded. And this amplifier is what kind of helped finish off the recording of Continuum as kind of one of the primary amplifiers for the back half of the studio recording sessions. Of course, a lot of people are, are knowing the uh, Dumble amplifier made by uh, Alexander Howard Dumble. And this is one of them right here. This one's a steel string singer. Uh, this one doesn't have um, overdrive or anything. It's, a, it's an amplifier that's clean sounding, uh, yet is able to produce a great big sound. Uh, Alexander uh, did make a whole lot of these here. I can't tell you exactly how many, but uh, these are such strong amplifiers. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan used them. Uh, Bonnie Raitt used them. Uh, a lot of artists back then were using these amplifiers. And while this amplifier played such a major role in the sound and recording process of Continuum, for the tour that followed, John actually favored the Dumble Overdrive specials, and it wasn't really until 2008 and the Battle Studies era was beginning where John actually would start to use this amplifier as his main Dumble, and he really hasn't ever looked back. I mean, this Dumble has been featured in pretty much all of my favorite John Mayer performances. I mean, one of my favorite of all time is 2010, Keith Urban and John Mayer for Crossroads, just a stupidly good performance that the two of them did, and this is one of the amplifiers that he's used. So I, you know, I love this amplifier. It's just brilliant sounding and John uses it for a clear reason. But let's move on to Dumble Steel String Singer 004. And if you guys ever get them confused um, which one is which or which number is which, just think about it this way. He required number two first and then he got number four. So the lower serial number one is the earlier one. The higher serial number one is the more recent addition to his rig. So Dumble Steel String Singer 004. This amplifier John Mayer originally kind of purchased as a backup for 002, and as we know, no Dumble is 100% alike another because they're all built for whoever initially ordered them, and you know, there's a bit of differences between each amplifier. Even though they're both Steel String Singers, they're not the identical amplifiers. And Jesse actually owned this amplifier before John purchased it, and John bought it through Emerald City Guitars off of Jesse back in 2015. And the amplifier originally started off in life as a combo, and there's some shots from Jesse as well as John playing the amplifier where he's actually using the original combo shell as the cabinet. It was kind of in like a brownish tan suede. That's the original shell that the amplifier was housed in, and then it went to this beautiful suede shell with that kind of Vox diamond style grill cloth. John eventually did have the amplifier changed out from the head shell at least into just a black Tolux head shell. Personally, I think that the blue suede is just epic looking and I wish John kept it looking like that because it's just such a vibe with that bright blue suede with that amplifier, but John maybe just wanted something a little bit more subtle for his rig. The last thing I'll say about Dumble Steel String Singer 004 is that this was the amplifier that John actually used in the Dumble slot at least for the Sawbrock tour, you know, the last big world tour we've seen John go out on. And he actually chose this amplifier over 002, which was kind of interesting to see that choice kind of shift where 002 has always kind of been the main Steel String Singer, but for Sawbrock, 004 actually took the place and was the main Dumble amplifier. Again, this will probably be another amplifier that I do just a singular deep dive video on, but let's move on. The last category of Dumble amplifiers we have to discuss in today's video are the Dumble Ends. Now let's tackle Dumble End Special Serial Number 008 first. This amplifier I mentioned at the beginning of the video and it was owned by Jesse, who John actually had reached out to in order to purchase the amplifier and was part of a trade deal for a Dumble Overdrive Special Serial Number 222. And this was back in 2016 when John bought this amplifier off of Jesse. And we see him use it a little bit in 2017 
seen with Dead and Company, but other than that, this amplifier hasn't really been featured that much in any other live performances. Next, we're going to move on to the Dumbleland Overdrive Special Serial Number 006. And on the Wong Notes podcast, Corey Wong's podcast, he had John Mayer on um, about this time last year, actually. John mentioned that it's one of his favorite amplifiers ever, and he briefly touched on the fact that it's an overdrive version, essentially, of the Dumbleland uh, Specials. And this amplifier is really cool. We see John using it a lot with Dead & Company, um, especially the past couple of years. Maybe for the final tour that's coming up, we'll actually see it get brought back out again, especially, you know, as John mentioned, it's one of his favorite sounding amplifiers ever. And this amplifier famously died on him uh, during the 2021 Dead & Company tour um, in the fall. I touched on that in a video that did fairly well on YouTube. But yeah, that's Dumble Dumbland Overdrive Special Number 6. It's at this point we find ourselves talking about the very last Dumble that we just have to discuss. And I've really saved what probably is the best amplifier for last year. And it's because this is Dumbleland Special Serial Number 005. This amplifier is the one that Stevie Ray Vaughan used to record Texas Flood. Essentially, the story behind this Dumbleland special is that it was at Jackson Brown's studio, and when Stevie Ray Vaughan came in to record Texas Flood, this is the amplifier that he used. And for quite a few years, there's been a lot of mystery surrounding this amplifier and its connection to John Mayer as just a big Dumble fanatic, as well as a massive Stevie Ray Vaughan fanatic as well. You know, the guy literally influenced John essentially to pick up the guitars. Stevie Ray Vaughan is John Mayer's biggest influence. So it makes sense that he had some sort of connection to this amplifier. And in 2015, for Stevie Ray Vaughan's introduction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, this is the amplifier that John used on stage. And when everyone kind of saw this, there was some rumors going around Okay, does John now own that amplifier, the Texas Flood Dumble? And it was kind of a lot of speculation and stuff, and there are actually some photos of it as well being used in the studio for the Search for Everything sessions. Um, so again, a bit of speculation occurred. Does John Mayer own the Texas Flood Dumble? And on the Wong Notes podcast last year, John actually confirmed that, yes, I own this incredible amplifier. Just for some further context as well, John had this amplifier in the room with him and Corey when the podcast was being recorded. And he says, the one on the right is a Dumbleland special serial number 005. That belonged to Jackson Brown. It was in Jackson Brown's studio when Stevie Ray Vaughan recorded Texas Flood. He recorded the entire album through that amp is what John actually says. And that is the Texas Flood Dumbleland special. No one knew this before I mentioned this to you, but I used that amp when I played Stevie Ray Vaughan's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inauguration ceremony. And that was a very special thing. Now, essentially, John's pretty much confirming that he owns this amplifier. You know, we saw it in 2022 in his possession during the Corey Wong podcast. He used it in 2015 for Stevie's inauguration ceremony to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It was present during the Search for Everything's recording sessions as well, and a few other performances here or there. And John essentially, again, confirming what the amplifier is. Like I said, there was a lot of speculation, you know, um, a lot of people assumed that that's what that amplifier was, but... It's very great to hear right from John confirming that, yes, this is that just probably the most iconic Dumble amplifier of all time. If you had to put any of them as, you know, the ultimate Dumble amplifier, I think Steve Ray Vaughan's Dumble that he used for Texas Flood is probably the number one. I think that's probably the most important Dumble in all of history, I think. So there you guys go. Those are all the Dumble amplifiers that we know John Mayer has owned, confirmed at least, at some point or another, save for those Dumble Overdrive specials again at the very beginning. Just because they all look the exact same, it's so difficult to know exactly which one it is you are looking at without confirmation of serial numbers that John actually owns. So let's actually, you know what, let's take a look and I'll give you guys a number of how many we talked about in this video. All right, so taking just an inventory of all the different Dumbles we talked about here, I'm going to say three overdrive special 100 watt heads from the 90s. Um, I think that's a nice conservative number. It's possible John owned at least one more at some point or another, but let's just go with three because we have two confirmed serial numbers and then I'm um, just accounting for one extra one that we don't really know that he had. Again, because it's impossible to tell them apart. Um, we have the ODS that Keith Irvin purchased, which is four. The combo, five. Um, six is the silver face 50 watt head used in Den Company 2019. And then seven is the 70s head again in that private jet photo that John took that we've never really seen him use, but we know he's taken around with him and definitely using kind of in a more private setting for sure. 
So that's seven there. Then we have Overdrive Reverb 59, again, probably my favorite dumbbell of all of them, it was eight. Nine and 10 are the two steel string singers, followed by 11, 12, and 13, which are all of the dumbbell ends. So we have 13 different dumbbells that we know John has used throughout his, you know, obviously very amazing career. And that's without accounting for the ones that he owns, again, that we don't know that he has. And of course, some of these dumbbells that I just mentioned in this list of number, like this sequential list, he's sold and gotten rid of. And maybe there are other ones in this list that we might think he still owns, but maybe he's also gotten rid of them as well. But knowing that John really is passionate about the gear he uses and these dumbbell amplifiers especially, and the creation of his kind of collection, we can assume, I think it's safe to say that John probably is acquiring more dumbbells than he's getting rid of. So if anything, I think 13 is a very conservative number that he currently owns today. It's probably higher than that because again, there's a lot of dumbbells I'm sure that we just have no idea that he owns. Even the Texas Flood Dumbbell Land Special. We really had no confirmation that he actually owned that amplifier for the longest time. And that's when you were kind of like, okay, does John own it or does he not? Is he just borrowing it at convenient times when it makes sense? Who knows? But now we kind of know, okay, this is clearly John's if he's been bringing it on Corey Wong's podcast, right? So I think let's say at least 15, 16, probably maybe closer to 20, actually. Yeah, let's, I'd probably say closer to 20. And with that quote with Keith Urban saying to John owns around like 14 or so, he definitely seems very much in the ballpark of what John owns and John and Keith are very close as well. So you, I think we can take the number that Keith Urban says, you know, as a very good ballpark estimate of what John had, at least at that time. And again, I think he's probably probably been acquiring more dumbbells over the years. So you guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a long one, I know, but I thought I'd just kind of give you guys the best, you know, singular video on all the different dumbbells John has used um, and just the best information possible without skimming on these amplifiers too, too much and just lightly touching on them, you know, too little, but not deep diving into every specific one a ton. Again, like I mentioned a couple times in the video, I will be doing a deep dive on a few of these different amplifiers, like the two steel string singers, like probably the Texas Flood one, like the Overdrive Reverb. Again, my favorite dumbbell that he's ever used. I just love that thing so, so much. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video, especially. These are what all my videos are like, just, you know, trying to overload you guys with as much information as I can in the best way possible. And as always, I really appreciate the love and support that the channel's been getting. So you guys, please take care until the next time. We'll see you soon. Anyway, go ahead and click the subscribe button if you like what you see.